Hey, welcome back. This is Dr. Jim Sung, and today is Tuesday at 12.30, and we're going to be talking about fats. Good fats, bad fats, etc. But what I like to do is I like to start with a case study. Uh, a case study that will help, uh, help you understand why we utilize fats and what the benefits of using good fats uh, can be for someone who has neurodegenerative disease. So I have a patient who has late onset Alzheimer's, right? So they developed um, cognitive difficulties, short-term memory issues, getting up in the middle of the night, going and walking around and not knowing where to go back to bed. Uh, you know, it's not sleeping well. So all these neurodegenerative changes, including smell changes, bowel movement changes, and so forth. And, and what we did for this patient is we, we try to utilize different fuels for her in, or, in order to improve her brain function. So when she first came in, this patient complained of, and, and it was actually, the, the history was taken uh, with the help of her daughters because her cognitive decline and language barrier uh, made it difficult to get a great history. So the daughter came in and, and basically stated she has poor memory, right? Uh, poor posture, weakness in both legs, neck pain, um, and she has, um, over the last uh, couple of years, have declined significantly uh, in terms of her mental health. And she did not want to interact with people, and she didn't want to talk to other people. Um, she was, you know, staying in her room a lot. Um, so she was very concerned about her. So one of the first strategies that we put into place for this patient is a ketogenic diet, keto, K-E-T-O, genic diet. And the reason we did that is, and the research is showing that some of the uh, late onset Alzheimer's or dementia type patients are actually having problems converting their fuel for utilization. So if you look at the brain, it's about three pounds and it only makes up a small percentage of body weight yet it uses 20% of your glucose. So it essentially uses a lot of sugar or glucose to make the metabolic functions work in the brain and, and have it fire, so your short-term memory and all these other things, right? So as we get older, people can develop diabetes, like type 2 diabetes, where over the years they've used so much sugar in their diet that the pancreas will no longer produce enough insulin to get the sugar into the cells. So essentially what happens with uh, Alzheimer's patients, or uh, some of the research has been showing, is that the, the brain is developing almost a diabetes uh, where it's not utilizing the sugar uh, for uh, fuel or brain function. So the brain is not using, utilizing sugar. So what do we do? This is not a person who's saying, oh, you're diabetic like you need insulin or metformin and those types of things. This is a person who's got normal blood sugar relatively in their, in their uh, blood tests, yet they exhibit signs of memory loss and Alzheimer's. So if you're not utilizing your sugars in the brain, you can technically call it a, a type three diabetes, right? Diabetes of the brain. It's not utilizing glucose very well. It's become in inefficient, right? So what do we do? We have to be able to use an alternative fuel. The alternative fuel is fats, which will convert to ketones. Ketone can be used as a natural fuel that your body can produce through the liver and use it as fuel. So it'll use either your fat cells or the fats you take in to convert into a ketone. So the ketone can be used as an alternative fuel for the brain instead of sugar. Does that make sense? So ketosis can be achieved by increasing fat intake up to about 70 to 75 percent of your caloric intake. And then the rest will be made up of protein and minimal amounts of carbohydrates or net carbs. Okay, we'll go into the exact specifics of ketosis next week and how we would do a ketogenic diet. But essentially what it is is the diet that uh, Dr. Atkins 
had promoted uh, many years ago. It was called the Atkins diet. And it's basically using a lot of fats to burn and lose weight. Okay. Um, there were some, um, I guess, uh, faults with that diet because they, they didn't limit it to the good fats. Um, you were allowed a lot more protein than necessary. But if you actually use more fats or good fats, uh, and I'll go with that in a second, you can actually get your body to burn the fat as well as fat tissue in your body. So that your body learns how to burn fat rather than sugar. And the United States is in an, is in an epidemic of people who are obese and has di type 2 diabetes, right? So we are constantly fueling our body with sugar. And it's become more and more problematic. And the, the rates of uh, diabetes has gone through the roof. Just go to the mall. I mean, go to the mall and count every 10 people that go by. And six of them, six out of 10, will be either overweight or obese. And they will eventually, if not already diabetic, will eventually develop diabetes. So it's a big problem. And one way to combat that or, or reverse this process is the utilization of fats. And uh, for a very long time, uh, post-World War II, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the government agencies and the health organizations, they started to promote like a low-fat diet. And it was absolutely the wrong way to go. They needed to use the fats, but they're using, uh, they're saying low-fat diets or using uh, what we call PUFAs, uh, P-U-F-A, uh, polyunsaturated uh, fatty acids. Basically, things like vegetable oil, soybean oil, corn oil, oil right, Crisco. I mean, if you look at it, corn oil, um, much of the corn is, is genetically modified, right? So is soybeans. And you use these cheap vegetable oils for all your cooking needs. Instead, you should be using things like coconut oil for cooking, right? So let's go into the top five uh, good fats, all right? So things like avocados is fantastic. So you should have avocados in your diet on a very regular basis, almost every day, right? You can use coconut oil for cooking. So you use coconut oil. Um, you can even take coconut oil and just you know eat it, right? Um, and you can make other things out of it, right? Uh, what can you can also derive from coconut oil is MCT oil or medium chain uh, triglycerides. And that's another way to use um, a good fat or fuel for the brain. So instead of using sugar, you can use MCT oil, and it can help you get into ketosis. Um, you can also use grass-fed butter. Uh, you can use a company called Kerry Gold, and they use a you know grass-fed cows to make the milk to make the butter. Now, unless you have issues with dairy, you know if you have the issues with dairy, you shouldn't use the butter. But uh, butter can be a good source of fat for some people. And uh, it depends on your you know, genetic makeup and your allergies to dairy. Uh, the other one is extra virgin olive oil. You really want to get the good, high quality extra virgin olive oil. You know, a nice tinted glass where you know, the light doesn't get in. And it should be rich. It should not be the light, fluffy uh, virgin olive oil. It should be extra virgin olive oil. Um, you can go online and Google it and you'll find you know, many different varieties. Um, but there are uh, better quality extra virgin olive oils available uh, for use for salads and other things. The last thing would be uh, omega-3s. Omega-3s from either fish, uh, small fish, because the higher fish, the bigger fish has the mercury content and so forth. Um, so it's important to use uh, an omega-3, uh, basically EPA and DHA, right? DHA is great for brain and nervous tissue, EPA is great for more peripheral tissues and inflammation. So you can utilize these five fats. So let's go over it again. It's avocados, coconut oil, butter, extra virgin olive oil, and omega-3s, right? EPA, DHA. Now there's, there's a variety of different you know, fish oils and, and so forth that's available. Uh, obviously you want to go with the smaller fish. The ones I like is uh, one from Nordic Naturals, it's an Arctic cod liver oil. You can also use it from Northern Atlantic salmon or maybe the smaller fish to get the extra virgin, uh, extra uh, clean products with the mercury. So most fish oil companies will uh, 
uh, the reputable ones will uh, make a huge effort to make sure it's purified correctly and they remove all the contaminants, uh, especially the heavy metals like mercury, out of their system. And there's other ways where they can get it from algae, right? We use a product called Phyto DHA, which is a uh, high DHA from phytoplankton. And it's important to use those types of things because uh, it's important to make sure you get a high quality oil, right? Not the, something with a lot of fillers and, uh, and contaminated with heavy metals and so forth. So it's important to do that. So if you use those fats and you use it as like 70 to 75% uh, of your diet, uh, along with um, uh, you know, generous amounts of protein and very little carbohydrates, uh, or what we call net carbs, and we'll explain that next week as we get into uh, a ketogenic diet. So, so I started with the case study of an Alzheimer's patient and how to utilize fat and using ketones to fuel the brain. So we were able to take this patient uh, who's in her uh, early 70s and take them from a cognitive uh, decline and reverse the process where three months later her uh, subjective improvements and her interaction and eye contact and the ability to smile and, and converse has all improved uh, to about 50 to 60 percent according to the family members. So that's a big turnaround for someone who was going downhill pretty quickly, right? Because at, at the end of the day, there's, there's not a lot of answers for these Alzheimer type patients in the medical model uh, because there's no real drug uh, that's going to help correct it. There is no magic pill. It has to be done with um, a lot of care. Uh, the diet is crucial. Uh, we also utilize things like uh, 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 glutathione suppositories. Uh, you can use coffee enemas. You can also use um, um, what we call PEMF, or pulse electromagnetic frequencies that we use in the office to help stimulate the brain. We can also use oxygen. You can use um, vagal nerve stimulation. So we use a lot of different therapies in our office to get the brain to fire a little bit better. And utilizing uh, a dietary change is very important because you try to give it an alternative fuel for the brain. But at the end of the day, we need to also improve brain connectivity. How one neuron speaks to the next. Because if you have degeneration, you have to, have to at least improve the ability for you, one neuron to talk to another neuron, right? One cell to talk to another one and build what we call plasticity. We need to be able to have them communicate better. And the only way you can actually do that is through some sort of exercise, right? Whether it's a physical exercise and so forth. But in our office, we use functional neurology, um, basically different things like eye movements, posture, optic kinetic tapes, and other things to help integrate the brain and to make it fire better, to improve the overall brain function. It's not just utilization of diet, which is a very important part, right? A diet is crucial because you have to give it the fuel. And then once you give it the fuel, you have to be able to stimulate it, stimulate the nervous system so it can regenerate to a certain extent or improve plasticity, the connections, and how they communicate. So it's crucial to do that. So next week, we'll go into uh, the ketogenic diet and some of the research and give you like the ins and outs of how to do it. And then we'll talk about um, what fats not to use. I mean, we mentioned it already, you know, the vegetable oils, soybean oils, and corn oils, and Crisco. You know, you can't use those types of things. It's, it's better to use uh, the good fats, uh, especially for, you know, people say, what can I cook with? You can cook with coconut oil. Um, you can also use palm oil, uh, which can be decent. Uh, there's even avocado oil. Um, so you can use these alternative fuels uh, to, to improve your health. And if you, if you want to tune in next week about ketogenic diet, really, if you want to talk about weight loss and how to make yourself lose weight, the ketogenic diet might be the answer because for many people who come into our office, They've been through many different dietary programs, right? You, you name it, you know the big names, right, out there. 
and you have to count you know how many carbs you had and you have to count and you get these points and all the other stuff um, there's a million different types of uh, programs out there in terms of weight loss the question is can they maintain the weight loss and lifestyle of a dietary uh, plan right a weight loss plan and oftentimes they can't because it's not they don't see it as a lifestyle change, but they look at it as a program. Once you're done, you're done. And oftentimes they gain back the weight plus more. So it's very important to do that. And I've seen also diets where they um, basically go you know, into a 600 calorie diet and they call it a dietary plan. I mean, it's ridiculous that you're going to sustain 600 calories, right? It may, in the short run, be of some benefit. But to sustain a 600 calorie diet, of course you're going to lose weight, right? It's without a doubt. But what happens when you add in some foods and you get your calorie count to about 1,200, right? Which isn't still isn't sufficient enough. Then what happens, right? You balloon up, right? So stop going on this merry-go-round of going, you know, from doctor to doctor or one program to another or all these dietary things. Uh, if you've done all those and you still don't lose the weight then maybe the ketogenic diet might be for you, okay? And we'll go into all the ins and outs next week about the ketogenic diet, and I hope you t tune in next week. And I'd like you guys um, to really share the video and uh, like the page so you can get the updates. Uh, we like to change the world. We want to change everyone's health uh, one person at a time. If you have any questions, write it down uh, below the video, and we'll try to answer them uh, sometime this week. And otherwise, we'll see you on the healthy side next week. Take care.